How's it going guys? Difficult question for biochemistry step one, pediatrics TCK. Before we start, if you subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, moment underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A underscore medical links down below from your telegram. Links to the telegram for your channel down below and I'll start the clip. 12 hour old male newborn, 28, <laughs> fuck am I saying? Newborn born at term to a mother 28 uh, years old. And uh, she has type one diabetes mellitus. Uh, his serum glucose, 30 milligrams per deciliter. Question on to know which the phone is most likely responsible for the newborn's hypoglycemia. Okay, not dramatic, but uh, not easy. So let's just whip through the answer choice here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, decreased serum insulin activity around fucking answer. So the mom has diabetes. What this means is during the fetal period, there's going to be increased glucose from the maternal circulation that crosses the placenta into the fetal circulation. So the fetus is going to have hyperglycemia while in the womb, and that means the fetus will increase production of endogenous insulin, okay? That's what's gonna happen while the fetus is in the womb. It's sort of tautological that I'm saying that because obviously a fetus is in the womb to begin with. Um, but what you should know is that insulin, the maternal insulin is not crossing the placenta. It's the glucose that does, then the fetus is gonna produce its own insulin, okay? So if anything, we'd have increased serum insulin activity, and we know that insulin will decrease glucose. So if insulin is low, if anything, we would expect continued hyperglycemia. It's not a good answer so far. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, decrease 1,4 glucose activity. Wrong fucking answer. Also known as uh, lysosomal acid maltase, uh, Pompeii syndrome slash Pompeii disease, collection storage disease type 2. This is going to be a child that has cardiomyopathy and hepatomegaly. So it's a one of the glycogen storage disease, as I just fucking said, but so let's say this is what goes down. You get a big paragraph. You have no idea what's going on. They list a bunch of glycogen storage disease enzymes and you're like, shit, I don't know this stuff. They say something in the paragraph about the heart. They say cardiomyopathy. You're like, boom, that's Pompeii. That's just one four lysosomal acid maltase. That's our answer here. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, decreased glucokinase activity, wrong fucking answer. Glucokinase, just the hexokinase variant in the liver. First enzyme glycolysis, glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. And that would be increased in the setting of increased insulin. So insulin can activate glucokinase in the liver. And if anything, we already established that insulin would be elevated, not low in this patient, because we have hypoglycemia. Normal, normal serum glucose should be 72 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. So we know right away glucokinase activity, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased glucose 6-phosphatase activity, wrong fucking answer. This is von Gierk disease, okay? So von Gierk is going to be a sick kid, lactic acidosis, hypoglycemia, hepatosplenomegaly. So it's the most important glycogen storage disease, type 1. You need to know uh, basic uh, diseases for pediatrics for 2CK. For step one, of course, it's a pass-fail exam, not numerical anymore, but you could be aware of von Gierk, very, very important. McCardle, okay, so glycogen phosphorylase in the muscle, myophosphorylase deficiency, going to be an adult, teenager adult who has severe cramping, rhabdo with exercise, okay? So von Gierk disease, wrong fucking answer. Choice A, decreased gluconeogenesis, correct answer. So this kid, as I already said, is going to have increased endogenous insulin production during the fetal period. And then following birth, well, you lose the transplacental excessive glucose coming from the mom, but the neonate, okay, no longer a fetus, the neonate's insulin is still high because we had that hyperglycemia while in the womb. So that elevated insulin, the hyperinsulinemia, uh, that will be maintained in the initial neonatal uh, post-parturition period. And that can cause precipitous drop in serum glucose, so neonatal hypoglycemia. You assimilate wants you to know this mechanism, okay? If you think this question's a little bit weird or nitpicky, not my fucking opinion, it's on the NBME exam. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.